you want to hear about my New York City trip and see some of the footage that I shot, I will tell you, I always have the most, the best intentions of documenting everything, but I like to live my life. I don't like to watch it through the lens of a viewfinder, so I always forget to pull out the camera. So I didn't film as much as I would have liked, and it was a closed set um, on the Entertainment Tonight set, so I couldn't really, I couldn't film anything while I was actually filming, so I apologize for that. Uh, some housekeeping details. The first segment where I got to interview Connie Britton, I'll get to how that happened in a minute, uh, already aired and I could put a link to that down below. And then I have just been told that my segment where I personally am interviewed, I'm not the interviewer, I'm the interviewee, will air sometime the week of November 18th. And when I have more details, of course, I will um, tweet them. We arrived Monday afternoon and there are a lot of highlights, but kind of the coolest part was we got off the plane, we were taking the escalators down to baggage claim, and there was a guy, like a driver, standing at the bottom of the escalator with a, holding a sign with my name on it. Like, just like in the movies. And I've never had a guy with a sign. I've never had a dude. I called him my dude. I've never had a dude before. You're like, waiting for me to take my luggage. So that was real. like, I felt like a celebrity, just for like a tiny little moment. It was really fun, and I would love to have a dude meet me at every airport I come in and out of, but, you know, that's just not reality for me. Anyway, that was, that was cool. Then um, we flew into JFK, for those of you that are familiar with that. Drove into the city, I figured out why there's such a traffic problem in New York. Your speed limits are too low. Who has 45 mile an hour speed limits on a highway? That's insane. Do what we do in Texas, 70. If everyone's going 70, you'll get there faster. Okay, that's just my <laughs> input for New York. So we got to the hotel. We stayed at the Westin Times Square, which was, um, our room was very nice. We had an upgraded room, um, so we got a corner view. And I had a beautiful view, like a, almost like a 180 degree view of the city, a little bit of Times Square, and some body of water. I'm not sure exactly what I was looking at. Um, the, we arrived just in time for a tornado watch and thunderstorm. So welcome to New York City. Last time I went, we hit Tropical Storm Andrea. So maybe I need to not go there anymore and avoid natural disasters. Seems like I bring them with me. So we just had basically enough time to check into our room, which was, like I said, was beautiful. It was a big room by any standards. I'm sure by New York standards, they were palatial. Um, and I arrived to find a huge bag of goodies from the Pons people, which I shared in my New York haul. And um, the umbrella was definitely a nice touch because we needed it pretty much the whole visit. And um, that evening, I just had enough time to freshen up and then go downstairs to meet um, a bunch of subscribers, which was probably my favorite part of the trip, actually. Because um, that's the part that's, I don't know, I know it sounds cheesy, but unless you're living it, it just, you, you don't get it. But it's what makes this all worthwhile. Otherwise, I'm just a crazy woman sitting alone in my family room talking to a camera. The fact, the opportunity to interact with viewers and talk about our obsession with makeup and trade stories and trade tips and hear about each other's lives. That is awesome. Like I wish I could get around more. I wish I could travel more and meet as many of you as I personally could because that was awesome. And these are hardcore viewers because they braved tornadoes and thunderstorms. And um, one couple came as the last night of their honeymoon. They were um, kind of doing a US tour on their honeymoon and then back to Israel the next morning. So that was really cool. It just most beautiful, I have the most intelligent, most beautiful viewers. I don't care what anybody else says, I do. So that was awesome and I really enjoyed it. And honestly, I wish I could have spent the whole rest of the evening with you guys. We should have just all gone to dinner, but oh well. No, instead we went to this restaurant called Pure Food and Wine, which is in Gramercy Park. I don't, that means nothing to me, but for those of you that know the city, you'll know where that is. And apparently it's this famous raw vegan restaurant I won't go into too much on that. I was posting a lot on Facebook and Twitter during that period, but um, I am not a health food nut, but my husband does not eat red meat and he's a lot more adventurous on the healthy food uh, side of things. So a raw vegan restaurant is where all of the food is vegan, meaning not just vegetarian, nothing that comes from an animal. So no cheese, no dairy, no fish, just plants. Anything that can be made from a plant. And it's raw, which means that they don't cook it. It's not heated to, I think, it's a certain temperature. Like, so they can just basically take the chill off. I'm not even kidding you. Um, 
One thing I learned about our visit in New York is that personal space is not a concept that they have there. So a lot of the tables, a lot of the restaurants were either communal dining tables where you just sit at a table. Like if it's a table that seats eight, like a long table, you just, parties of two go down the row. It's very strange. In this case, we had our own table, but I was about this far away from the table next to us. So if I were to cut my food, my elbow would smack into the guy next to me. Being the shy person that I am, of course I struck up a conversation with the two gentlemen sitting next to us. Um, I didn't so much talk to the man sitting right next to me because I'd have to turn all the way around, but the man sitting kitty corner to me was, you know, very easy to talk to and I could completely overhear everything of their conversation even if I didn't want to because I was this far away from the guys. I didn't know who they were, they just seemed like friendly guys and they had never been to this restaurant either. And so, or experienced anything like it, so we were all kind of joking about the food and trying to figure out what on earth it would really was made of. Let's just say that vegan is not my thing. I'll be honest. Uh, I get why other people like it. I just I'm not really a big vegetable fan to begin with, and no, like my husband ordered lasagna and there was tomato paste in there. That part I identified, and there's thinly sliced, um, thinly shaved slices of zucchini as the noodles. And the ricotta cheese was really cashew nut paste. I don't, I, I'm sorry. No, it's just not for me. So we were all kind of having a laugh. And then the desserts were amazing though. I have to say, if you go to Pure Food, it's worth it just to eat their desserts. I had a vegan Malamar. Just Google it, because I still don't know what it was. But the whole time I was talking to this guy, and his name was Paul, and he seemed like a nice guy. We got in the cab, and my husband said, you didn't know who that was, really? You, you didn't know? And I said, no, just... A nice guy. He must be in the entertainment industry because I heard him talking about writing and screenwriting and producers and so behind he goes, that was Paul Giamatti. He's an actor. He's a character actor. He's been a ton of stuff. Um, just clueless. I am clueless. So that's the cool thing about New York. You can just bump into a celebrity and not even know it. So that was Monday night. And then we went back to the hotel because I was really tired. Then Tuesday was filming day. I got no sleep. I ordered room service for breakfast and didn't eat any of it because I was so nervous. Um, they were going to take us, the Ponds people were taking us to a very nice restaurant for lunch before we sh did the shoot. So even though they told us we were doing hair and makeup at the studios, of course, I put on, I put on a full face of makeup, but I didn't like go overboard. It was just very natural. And the lunch was great, and I think I have some scenes from that. And we went with the other two winners and their um, companions, so that was fun. And um, two people from Ponds, and the meal was great. But like I said, totally nervous and excited, so we really didn't eat like we could have and enjoyed it. Um, then we went to the studio. They were filming at the Rachel Ray Studios because Connie Britton was already there filming a piece for Rachel Ray. So instead of making Connie Britton run around the city, we just use their space and they set us up in a conference room this is the glamorous side of the entertainment industry this was this was pretty eye-awakening for me eye-opening so they set the three of us up in this conference room the makeup artists were already there and they also do hair and they had all their stuff out that was awesome because it was like being a kid in a candy store it was like seeing all the videos we see come to life like all the products we see mentioned was all laid out and i have footage of that it sort of legitimized my makeup obsession because so many products that I use were there on in their kits and so it was like oh I'm using pretty good stuff of the professionals and use it in their kits so that was neat but I'm not really glamorous to sit in an office chair and I thought they were doing our hair and makeup meaning wash our faces and start from scratch no they just start slapping stuff on on top of what I already had and that was really disappointing and it wasn't the makeup artist's fault like they know what they're doing and they're talented and they're very nice but you know, and they're only doing what the what they're told to do. So I guess they were told not to start from scratch. If I had known that, that was the setup, I would have taken the time to really do my makeup the way I wanted to. And I also realized that um, with the lighting and HD and all that, you really don't need to do anything extra. You just put on your makeup like normal. Maybe make sure you have blush, bronze, or lipstick. But the color balance and everything, they make you don't need to cake it on. So long story short, when you do see my pieces, I don't like my makeup and I won't have my feelings hurt if you tell me I don't look great. I just, I didn't really like it. Um, same thing with the hair. I literally just rolled out of bed, ran a brush through it and went thinking they're going to do my hair. No, they didn't. Then we need to change into our clothes. So where do they send us to? A bathroom, like 
a public bathroom, like with stalls and nasty lighting and gross floors. And <laughs> it's just not exactly what I pictured. I don't know. So I'm like, thank God I had put on my Spanx underneath my clothes because the thought of like completely stripping down naked in that disgusting, it was like a locker room. Okay. Anyway, so we get into our clothes and then we, they take us up to the green room. And the green room was beautiful. And I do have, I think, some pictures in there, I think. So I can't even remember. You'll, all that footage will be at the end. And we're sitting there and they had told us the week before that Connie Britton was gonna be there, that she was gonna be on set. We might actually get to see her. There was not really gonna be any interaction with her. We couldn't take pictures with her, that kind of thing. They also had told us that we were going to be interviewed, asked some questions about the ponds, about how we got started in YouTube, um, maybe some holiday tips, some fall tips for beauty, that kind of thing. So they didn't want our answers rehearsed, but they didn't want us to have that deer in the headlights look when they turned the cameras on, just to prepare us. They, so one of the directors or producers, I don't know who, I don't know what their titles were. It was very strange. Comes into the room and says, okay, we're gonna start doing your interviews, Marnie, you're going first. So I'm thinking, oh great, you know, like, I don't know. I wanted to get it over with, but at the same time, it was like, okay, you're on, here we go. So I'm walking down this long hallway. I feel like I'm walking into the execution chamber. My stomach is in knots, my heart is pounding. And the producer looks at me and says, okay, I didn't want to say anything. We didn't want to tell you ahead of time because we didn't want you to get nervous and we didn't want there to be any bad feelings among the three of you, but the producer saw your tape and you know, liked what they saw and they want you to, they want you to interview Connie Britton. Oh, here's the questions you want to ask. She should be in the door any second now. Good luck. <laughs> I was like, what? What? Oh my God, are you freaking kidding me? Like, just like that. Here, here's your list of questions. Go. And it was like an out of body experience. Right then in walks Connie. Oh, and I'm in this little room, like this, it's not the big studio set. It's this little room that, I don't know, it was like maybe a 10 by 12 foot room. There's two lighting guys, a camera guy, a, a bunch of guys with clipboards. And so um, it was very odd. They were nice guys. They were actually the nice, they're, everyone was nice, but these guys were like just down to earth working guys, like normal. They were very nice, very pleasant to be around them. Anyway, in walks Connie. Just like, you know, like she's just like a normal person. I mean, I know she's a normal person, but she's not. I mean, come on. And uh, she looked she looked like any 46-year-old housewife friend of mine that I know. I mean, she was just, just like you see her in real life. She's very nice and and pretty, but not like take your breath away stunning. Just like, how do I put, I'm not putting her down. Like I really liked her a lot. She's very relatable. And that's what I liked about her. Like it wasn't like watching um, like Halle Berry walk in or Angelina Jolie. Like whether you like them or not, these are glamorous, stunning women. Connie Britton is a real woman. Like someone you would want to hang out with. I really liked her. And she walked in and she put her hands on my, she introduced herself. She goes, hi, I'm Connie. And I go, I know. <laughs> like, I mean, what are you supposed to say? I go, I know. I go, I'm Marnie. And then, um, she put her hands on my shoulder. She's like, you'll be fine. Let's just do this. And she was just easy. And then the cameras went on and, and, and I did it. And I, once the cameras go on, at least for me, the nervousness goes away and it was easy. And I felt like I could have sat there and talked to her all day. So that was that. And then our segment was over. Oh, they filmed us walking the hallways for some background shots, like just chit chatting, like we're girlfriends. I don't know if they're ever going to use that. Um, without sound, that was bizarre. We were talking about toilet training and traveling with kids and just normal stuff. She has a little kid, little boy, who's almost three. And then the other girls left and they filmed my interview. And then they said, all right, Marnie, you're free to go. You have a car waiting for you downstairs. Goodbye, thank you. And that was it. So um, I went back to the hotel and, oh, it was a close set. So like not even my husband could be there. He, could, he was with us for lunch. Then he went back and found a golf store in New York <laughs> and then met me at the hotel. And then um, we decided to, I didn't wash my face, I kept all the stage makeup on, and there was a crap ton. Like, she took that Cinema Secrets, that cream foundation, and just layered it all over, whatever. Um, and we went to one of Robert De Niro's restaurants in Tribeca. Like, oh, it's a weird name. La Conda Verde? Verde? La Conda? Something like that. We waited an hour because we didn't get reservations. So crass, so touristy, right? So we stood around for an hour. 
and we waited and the food was unbelievable and really, really good and totally worth the wait. And then we went and grabbed a cab to Carnegie Deli to get a piece of cheesecake the size of my head. And then uh, we went back to the, we walked back to the hotel from there. It was kind of a walk, went through Times Square again. And then Wednesday morning, just, you know, hung in the hotel room for just a little bit because I felt like we were going, going, going. Managed to get down to Inglot and Sephora that morning and then um, packed up and went to the airport. So that was my whirlwind visit. I'm going to insert some photos and footage after this uh, if I haven't bored you to tears. And um, again, just thank you for all your help in getting me there. It was, I feel like kind of like Cinderella at the ball. It was just an amazing experience. It was eye-opening, it was educational, it was fun, it was stressful, and I'm really glad to be back in my normal life. I, I can tell you right now, I don't really want to be famous. I kind of, I caught a little glimpse and I like my life. I'm happy with you and me here hanging out on YouTube. So, without further ado, here comes the footage. Thanks again for making this happen and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Good morning, it is 7.10 and I've been up since five and I went to bed at midnight because I was too excited. So I'm vlogging in a terminal and people are looking at me, but I'm excited because I'm going to New York City and it's gonna be cooler there literally, so that's pretty exciting. Anyway, um, maybe the next time you see me, I'll be in New York. Hello, I am at Steak, STK, I guess, Midtown with um, a host of friends here. So I'm gonna pan around. That's our Hi. And I'm there's Emily. beautiful Maria. Wave. Hi. And her friend Jennifer. Hello. And the Taylor. There's Sarah. <laughs> and look at Hello. It's done. You're on. Just yeah. smile. He hates to be on. And then look how pretty that is. I think they're giant carnation bouquets. So it's very funky. And we're waiting for our meal. And none of us are going to be able to eat because we're all a little too excited and nervous. But I'm attempting a vlog, so. There it is. See you later. Your hair and makeup. Hi guys. Here's Marnie too. So what's your name? Christine. And what Chris was that? This is Christine. Hi. And this is Anna. <sighs> and for those of you guys who <laughs> this is like product up, heaven. I know, right? <laughs> this is Marnie, which is Miss Gold Girl on YouTube, and then you're currently being filmed <laughs> by the one and only Maria. So Hi, I will link one below. Go check them out. And then if you want to pan to them, you guys want to talk. Here, you guys want to be on I'll camera. I'll show now. all the makeup. Sure. She's like, whatever. Yeah, show all the makeup. All the makeup that so we cool. have here. <laughs> it's like Christmas and birthdays. <laughs> it's like playtime. It's like toys for women. I mean, yes, I'm excited about what we're doing after, but honestly, this was the part I was really looking forward to. Ah. <laughs> Me too. Okay, I just want to show you guys all the stuff. So she really likes Clinique. But there's some Maybelline in there. Coffee. Look at all the color tattoos. See? There's the Bioderma. And then she put that on my lips and it feels so good. Love Ben Nye. Gotta get some of that. Oh yeah, I've seen those little wheel things. I want to get the zombie one, the flesh one, because I want to be a zombie for Halloween and embarrass my children again. Do you want to know what another good wheel is? This is the burn wheel. Awesome! And it, these colors are amazing for a lip and cheek. Awesome. Cream colors. Okay. The wonderful, is it Anna or Anna? Anna. Anna, okay. I know Anna's, I know Anna's. See, so the wonderful and talented Anna. Anna, see, I already did it. It's giving us all these tips. So these are the Muji brand Q-tips. How cool are these? They're really teeny tiny skinny. She highly recommends them. And then this is the brush cleaner that she also uses for her beauty blender. So I don't, we have to order it from these people, but I'm gonna check that out. It smells like heaven. It smells exactly like what you would think it would smell like. You kind of want to rub it all over your body. Probably could. Except it's soap. And then there's other weird and cool stuff. Look, Psst, dry shampoo, my favorite in the world. Apparently, professionals agree. So yay. There's the Bumble and Bumble. I've never tried the Bumble and Bumble spray. Which one? The surf spray. The surf spray? The beachy wavy. I got the John Water John Waters one. It smells like lavender. It did not frizz my hair up, but I've been too lazy to deal with it again. I think what else other cool oh paw paw ointment okay this is like walking into a fashion magazine editorial and seeing this stuff in real life paw paw ointment 
see. Look, Bioderma. And this is um, like an all purpose ointment from Australia. And so it's all natural, but it feels really good on your lips. What other goodies are in here? It's really good for. Oh, and I just want people to see she has the Sweet Cashew Spoolie. So apparently, I I know what I'm doing sometimes. See some NARS down there. Okay, so hair and makeup is done. And I'm in the green room before we go on set. And I'm gonna just pan out and show you this. And you can hear everybody else vlogging behind me, so hang on. <laughs> You know, we put it on. But it looks so pretty. Is this a green one? Look at the purple fuzzy rug. How cool is that? I'm being filmed. Um, yeah. Sarah is filming me. And um, face. Um, necklace is from Chico's. And it's really cool because, check this out. Yeah, I know you when you take this toggle thing, you can loop it around and put it through this. And now it's a short necklace. Oh. And it's not choking me, so we're not going to do that. But anyway, so that's that. The earrings are... I don't know, they might be Charming Charlie. The dress is Rebecca Taylor. I got this at Nina Marcus. And the shoes are Stuart Weitzman. Put them towards the wood because I can't really see with the carpet. There you go. There you go. There you go. These are not meant to run it, but they're actually not uncomfortable. And the watch will be coming off. So that's it. That's my face outfit of the Yay. day. Thank and you. look at this awesome. Oh, she's talking about the Bronze Baby Plus.